Cyborg Alpha, Infinite Tween in Middle School for Life. While it is 23 hours and 38 minutes into the 23rd day of in the 23rd day of uh, November 2021, and we're beginning our vlog once again, our observations vlog. I'm listening a lot more. Lionel's been off. I, okay, he's taking some time off. Great. Uh, I'm gonna listen, listening a lot more because uh, Yvette Cornell is back again. So she has the whole kick on ADOS. And what I hope to get across to her is that ADOS, unfortunately, is a lost cause. She needs to change her tune in order to really free her people. She wants to help the black community. The problem is, is that the black community is it, it, it this is this is this is what I talk about at work and stuff like that. This is what we're talking more about this. We're talking about ADOS and the global and global slavery. And this is going to be referenced also to uh, BLM and Antifa. I'm, as I said before, I'm anti-establishment. I don't. I'm not part of the establishment. I've never been a part of a part of the establishment. Uh, I've never been a part of society. I've always been outside of society. And well, initially when I was first coming up, I was you know why can't I be this and why can't I be that? And then after a while, I got satisfied being on my own. And when I watch people in society, they're miserable. People who are part of society, like this Felicia Richard, she, she, she's the person who sold out. I know a lot of people who have sold out. I mean, this is, this is what the vassal state is. The vassal state, the vassals are the people who sell out. And they don't, the, the elites don't have to worry about anything because in order to protect their own position, to protect their own slice of the pie, the vassals will stand up and destroy their own people. This is why you create vassals. As I said before, vassals are the uh, are the defense line, and they're there because they're paid and they're paid to sell out their own people. I mean, this is what ha unfortunately what happens. Is they may have had a great past and and so on and so forth. But uh, once you have uh, <laughs> you get enough money and you become the darling, the princess of the vassal world, you don't want to give up your princess status. You don't want to go back to schlub with the, the average person. So uh, you go, go from Fifi, Fifi Richards to uh, Felicia Richard. <laughs> I mean, this, is, this is the reality of the thing. And so what happens is, oh, why did she do what she did? Well, because she's, she's part, she's a vassal. She is part of the vassal state. She's part of this wall, the great wall that, of, of, well, not of China, but of slavery uh, that is created. And again, it's not about, it's not about race, it's about class. That's why these people, you know, the vassals are allowed up there because it's not about race. It's about class. The whole issue is about class. The whole race issue is a dead argument because the, the people who are at the top don't see it as a race argument. They see it as a class issue. We don't want this class of people with us. This is the Hamptons. This is, I mean, I mean, have you ever seen a BLM or Antifa because they're supposedly Black Lives Matter and Anti, anti-fascist, anti, you know, these are um, anarchists who uh, are anti-establishment. Well, why never uh, going to uh, uh, Beverly Hills, Rodeo Drive, uh, the Hamptons? Have you ever seen the BLM protest there? No. Where do they burn the city to the ground? In places that are allowed to by these so-called vassal mayors. These Again, the mayors who are also black, as I said before, you want to look at the Police violence. You want to? Add, you really want to solve that case? Go look at the University of Stanford's 1970. The uh, doc, Dr. Philip Zambardo's experiment called the Stanford Prison Experiment. It's right there. And it's right there. The, the whole, the whole. And this was 1970, 1965, 1970. It's right there. They've known about this for for more than 30 years. They've known about why people with badges will go and attack another person. It's, it's well understood. So why are they doing it now? Because they want they want the violence there. They want the race issue. They're creating the race issue. And they say, oh, where, where did you find this from? Well, this is Edward Bernays creating the creating the uh, creating the uh, the uh, consent, uh, manufacturing and engineering consent. How do you get people to do things they wouldn't ordinarily do? You manufacture it. You create it. You create the environment. I mean. You look at you understand Iran Contra going history. Look at Iran Contra. What do you see there? You see 
the United States and Israel, and they're the typical partners, the European partners. What are they doing? They're funding both sides. Of, they're funding and arming both sides of the Iran-Iraq conflict. Because for them, the conflict is what they want. So they're there arguing, arming both sides. So when you say, oh, the, 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 the Iraqis and so on and so forth, they're, uh, they're attacking us because they hate our freedom. No, because who funded and armed them? The United States did. They, they funded and armed their own terrorists. These are the people who took down the t Twin Towers. Well, you can't say that it's an inside job. Well, who did it? It was the uh, it was the Sunni Arabs. It was, it was those Arabs over there. Well, who funded it and trained the Arabs? The United States did. We'll go, we'll take down the bad guy Gaddafi. Well, who funded it and trained and actually put in Gaddafi? Well, the United States did. <laughs> I mean, you go back a look at it. He was put in with, with a prior regime change. The political winds changed in the United States. He wanted another guy in there, so they went in and did another regime change in Iraq. The What we see in the news is the work. A lot of what we're taught in schools is the work. And unfortunately, this poison has reached into Howard University. And this is what this is what you're hearing Yvette Carnell talk about. You're talk, they're talking about the and this is what the last one I listened to, listened to about this whole issue with Howard University, the, the uh, historically black colleges. Uh, that things are going really wrong. That's because the colleges, the whole university system, is a European white system is used to create the vassal state. It creates the whole vassal mind. So what happens in eight if you're ADOS and you want to, you know, be ADOS, you know, understand where you're coming from, you don't want to go to Howard University or any of the historical black colleges. Because they're there to set you up to bring you into the vassal state. So the upper elites are protected. This is why they don't care about what's going on in the inner city. This is why you never, you're never going to get your reparations. Because they set things up the way they do. I mean, ask yourself the question. If the Democrats are so gung-ho, pardon the pun, on gun control, why do you see what you see in Chicago? I mean, you see more devastation with guns in Chicago than any white area at all. None. I mean, there's, there, there's no comparison. You go into any black neighborhood across the United States and in these inner cities and stuff, where's the gun violence? There. Is it in the white areas? No. Why? How does, and even in kind of very conservative, well, let's say very liberal areas, which are all, the, all your little, little liberal cities, Miami, stuff like that. Oh, look, look at their inner cities. How many people are killing themselves, how many people, black people, are killing themselves with guns? I mean, this is pointed out all the time on Twitter and stuff. You can find whole groups talking about what's going on in the inner cities, the drive-by shootings and so on and so forth. Do you ever hear that on the news? No. Why? Because it's not part of the narrative. They needed to create a narrative of racism. And so you have BLM talking about, oh, this white cop gunned down this black person. I mean, this is the whole, uh, you know, the the uh, uh, Kyle Rittenhouse case was about BLM. It's about the white racist, the the, the, the white van vigilante. Well, it wasn't because he didn't shoot white pe black people. He shot white people, and the white people, and even the even the one who survived. This is how uh, Rittenhouse was acquitted and found not guilty. He came out said in the courtroom that that he had pointed a gun at Rittenhouse first. That they were trying to gun down Rittenhouse and get his gun. It wasn't. It wasn't that, that he, he was out there causing problems. They spotted him. They saw his gun. They wanted to take his gun, and so they approached him with weapons, and they approached him with weapons drawn, and he was able to pull up and shoot them. That's self-defense by def definition. But that's not what you see in the mainstream media. What are they talking about? They're talking about racism. They're picking up the Black Lives Matter, Black Lives Matter uh, thing. Same thing with Disney. Disney does the same thing. Wait, wait, let's, let's not go back to Disney just yet because don't forget ABC, NBC. All these majors are owned by these major studios who all support BLM. No one knows where the money that's been donated to BLM has gone to. We know that the, the leader of BLM got a nice nice house in, in, in I think it was uh, Rodeo Drive or, or Beverly Hills or one of those places in California that are, that are very rich. 
He wasn't. He didn't go back to the hood and you know spread the money around there. Why not? Because they, that person became part of the vassal state. They were paid off, and they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna drop all the rest of the black people and let them live the way they live. And this is the problem with ADOS. You're creating. You're, you're making the situation worse for yourself because no one's gonna come to help you. And why do I bring this up? Because my uncles. Not my grandfather, my uncles from the 1960s and 1970s they came over from the country from Greece and from Syria, from these mountainous regions. They were all sharecroppers, all of them. And they worked in the fields from, the, from when they were seven years old, they were working in the fields. One of my aunties, who is now rather wealthy, uh, she was born in a field. She wasn't born in a house, she was born in a field. Her mother gave birth to her. Well, the mother was, you know, working the crops. She gave, the mother gave birth and went back to working. This is the way they existed. This is, this is, I'm not talking about grandfather. I'm not talking about two generations back. I'm talking about my immediate uncles and, and, and uncles and aunts. So this whole ADOS situation, because they became Canadians and they became Americans, isn't remote, isn't simply about black people. It's, the slavery is global. And it's still going on today. The global slavery is still there. It's still a reality. And if we want to end global slavery, we have to stop playing the victim. And we cannot go back to these people and say, oh, look at what you're doing. Because these people, particularly the ones who are the, the vassals, they're your own people, your own kind, your own color, your own race, if you want to put it this way. They're the same race as you, but they're not the same class as you. This is why Felicia Richard is Felicia Richard and not Fifi Richards. She's become a different class. And as her class moved up, she became more elegant. She became this person of status. She became the princess, you know, the American princess, and uh, no longer associates with the, uh, <clears throat> the people below. And the thing is, what, what, what happens is, is that the reason why my uncle succeeded in what they did is they worked. Well, because most of the, this is the way a large chunk of the English, I mean, I'm here, the people across from me that, that, that I'm sitting at right now, they're a, a, a Chinese dance school group. They're from uh, a dance school. They, they, they come from Singapore. They come up very poor. They didn't have a lot of money. But they're here, and they've been like this for, more, for, for a long time now. They've been like this, they, where they work from as soon as they get here, usually about 11 o'clock in the morning. They don't leave until 11 o'clock at night. They put in 12-hour days. And of them, they're, they're, they're owning their own. They own. They just bought another. Uh, they bought another. <laughs> bought another building. I mean, look at look at uh, you know these places like uh, uh, the seven marine shops. How many how many Indians and other people, not a white people, are working there? Why? Because they started off slow and they worked their way up. Uh, same thing. This this is the bizarre part is that the people at the top who become vassals are a large chunk of the the, the, the Greek immigrant immigrants had the, had their children here. They grew up with the with the uh, so-called American education system, and now they're crying poor. Why? <laughs> they became part of the vassal state. They don't realize the vassal state and all that area there. The capitalism, all form of capitalism, all form, and this includes uh, the so-called monolithic capitalism, which is even worse. Uh, what people call socialism or the planned economy, that's monolithic capitalism. It means that only one group of people at the top, the elites will own everything and control everything. And they'll do this using the vassal state. The vassal state is created by the elites to control everything. This is the difference between Democrats and Republicans. Democrats are more controlling than Republicans are less controlling. Why would you ever vote for, you know, in a heavily Democrat area, if you're black, why would you ever vote for a Republican? Because they're less controlling. With the Democrat and the amount of regulations they put in, it's impossible to open up a hot dog stand. My uncles and aunts, before the, the before the Democrats got in, 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 in Toronto, and these are the liberals and so on and so forth, they put up a, a rinky-dink little a hot dog cart that they sort of rigged together on their own and started hot, selling hot dogs and hamburgers. They made a fortune. You just see the houses they bought with, <laughs> with a hot dog stand. And then what happens is, that, how do you get the capital? You need people who will sell things that people need. I mean, these same people, these same, my same uncles that I've seen, and I know they have these relatives and so on and so forth. 
when the, fir the first Greeks came and they started opening their restaurants. These restaurants were, were holes in the wall. They weren't anything special. But what happens, because they were cooking the stuff that they knew at home, you know, the stuff that would feed their kids, and they would bring this into the diner, they bring this into the restaurant. They had lineups around the corner, because they, and they kept the prices, because most of the people at the time were, were workers. They were industrial. They weren't basically managers. They weren't high-level people. Again, they were feeding the, uh, the working class and the underclass. And so they had to keep the prices low. And how do you do that? You bring in home-cooked food. So you're not going to a restaurant getting restaurant food. You're not getting fat. Uh, you're not getting a chain food, chain restaurant. And so they gave you good food, but they gave you a lot. They give you a lot. so they would go, oh man, I'm going to that Greek restaurant, which is a lot like the Armenians, right? The Armenian food, very tasty, very because they got a lot of they got a lot of spices in there, and so that's those spices give you a lot of flavor. It's not that oh hey, we're having white food. What's the flavor? Fat. <laughs> white people food is the flavor is fat. I call it white people food because I'm Pan-Asian. I eat Pan-Asian all the time. Uh, I have occasionally uh, white people food, but uh, with white people food, is it, there's not enough not enough flavor there for it. So I've, I've, I've sort of dropped off the uh, white people food wagon and sort of just now staying with the Pan-Asian because there's a lot more flavor there. <laughs> but the thing is, they, they, made, they made a lot of money. They made an enormous amount. They bought nice houses for the kids and everything. So the kids came up, uh, came up, and they grew up in these restaurants. Uh, the, the, way, the way the Greeks were and a lot of these Syrians, and even the Chinese. You walk into a Chinese restaurant that's family owned, and you see the kids in back uh, doing homework while everyone else is working. So they're doing homework at school, and they're peeking around the corner to sort of see who's coming in uh, to pick up whatever Chinese food they ordered. And there's a kid, boy, you know, you know, eight nine years old. They look and see you. They, you make eye contact. And, Hi! <laughs> I mean, this is this is how they exist. This, and for them, this is normal. The kids, when they grow up, because they become more educated, become because they are worked into their their they're moved in terms of their psychological conditioning. Schools are about psychological psychological conditioning. If they can turn you into a vassal, the people who seek status without without necessarily going for any substance. You're seeking status, not substance. So do you need to succeed? Well, these Greek Greek kids did the same thing. Their parents got older. Uh, the parents were, were kind of odd because, oh, yeah, they're racist. They're all about working with Greek people. So what they did is they hired these Sri Lankans who were coming in, and they put the Sri Lankans on the, uh, uh, as dishwashers. You go back in. Now, now this is uh, starting uh, just about uh, uh, 2015. You go walk into the Greek restaurant. And it's, there's no Greek running the counter. It's all Sri Lankans. Again, these people didn't have it easy. They, 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 they came out of war torn areas. And what happened? They own the restaurant now. What happens is the kids try to run the restaurant, but they couldn't run the restaurant. Because they just didn't, didn't have the work ethic. I mean, if you're, if you're coming off these fields, you're coming off these fields. Because don't forget, if you're a sharecropper, and all these people were sharecroppers, they started working from the sun, from the sun up to sundown. They started working in the fields from six years old. So six years old, old and up, they were working, and they were working full twelve hour days. So when they came here and had the lifestyle here, they could easily do a twelve hour day and not bat an eyelash. Get it? Get a kid who has gone through full education. You know, parents know how hard it is to get teens up and so on and so forth. They sleep in late and. But imagine this, you know, being this immigrant kid who has no understanding of this. They're going to run, cir the immigrants are going to run circles around the, uh, so, so the, the, educated, the educated elite. The educated elite are basically people you want to get out of the way, and this is what the elites are doing. This are, you pick the few who become worthy enough to become part of the vassal state, they become part of the mechanism, they become part of the apparatchik, and then you get rid of the rest of them. And who will they become? They become the street people. They become the homeless because they lose their mind. They lose their understanding of how the world works. And they're so disillusioned at 18, 19, uh, when they leave high school, that unfortunately what, then what comes next is, next is uh, drug addiction. And, of course, this is what you see on the streets. This is what you see in, in the so-called, uh, you know, these black areas. Is 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 is, 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 is it's, it's that level of destruction. 
And you think, oh, BLM and Antifa, right? This is why I say that they're fake groups because they're there to work for the creation of racism. This is the same thing with uh, critical race theory. There's no reality to this. And I just explained it, there's no reality to this. Why is it being created? Because, in other words, it's created because it gives these upper black people who are part of the education system, these are the administrators, a way to keep control. It's about control. Convincing the person down below, the younger person, that you're a slave and you can't do anything on your own. You need the state to help you. You need a government to help you. You cannot do things on your own. But you, you see these immigrants coming in, doing whatever they want to do on their own. They have no dependence on the government whatsoever because they, they've gone through the whole thing where the government wasn't there for them. And they had to learn to survive on their own. This is in India, Sri Lanka, uh, Bangladesh, all these different places. China, Taiwan, you know how, how many people are in the underclass? But I've been to these underclass uh, places. I've been to, uh, in terms of the, the villages and stuff like that, I, that's where I moved to. I have a place that up north where I do my observation uh, as well. It, they, it was basically built, the place, and it, it was built by the old Greek villagers here. They didn't want to go into a retirement home, so they built a little village uh, up north, and uh, it's a Greek little village, and I got a little trailer. I put my trailer in there, put it, made it part of the village. And the 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 the, the, the way, if you go into a regular school, uh, store and you buy the called spanakopita, everyone loves spanakopita. They have these, you know, Athens Bakery and Spartan Bakery and all these different Greek names, and they charge a fortune for it. My aunts and I learned how to cook from them because they don't have recipes. Made their own filo dough. It's hand rolled, and their own spinacopita, and they made it for pennies on the dollar. So they could afford to eat. You would have to go in there, then have all this food, tons of it. This is the way Greeks eat, but it wouldn't cost them a lot. It would cost them virtually nothing because they made everything. These people were self-sufficient. They didn't depend on the government. They didn't want to depend on the government. They wanted to do things for themselves. They wanted the government away from them. And this is why you would vote for Republican. Why? Because the Republicans and the, and the conservatives don't want you around. From the experience I had in the villages, I agree with them. I don't want... I don't, I don't care about going into a, a country club. I've had country club food. It's crap compared to what I have with, with, the, Greek, with the Greek villages. And these are, these are not white Greeks. They're not European Greeks. They're they're from the uh, mountains uh, near uh, uh, near and inside Turkey, uh, which which are. And I have my grandmother's from from the uh, uh, from the Syrian villages as well, and they're they're Asiatic. They're not they're not European. They're Asiatic, and that's why I have the last name Kata is because my my last name Kata means dark. I am part of Ados, but I'm not African. I'm not black. Well, which I say black because. Uh, <laughs> Is not part, my my ADOS does not come from the American experience of slavery in, in the United States. It comes from the American Empire and its slavery operation. This includes Disney. Disney is still a slave owner. Disney is and, and most of your major uh, 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 media studios are still involved in slavery. That's what I'm saying. If you want to do an ADOS, you want to do reparations targets. Disney is the way to go because they've got, they've got pockets below, below the money. They're talking about supporting BLM. Oh, they're talking. Hey, you're, you're talking about BLM, Black Lives Matter. Uh, uh, we're ADOS here. Uh, we need our reparations. See what they're going to say to that. Make that an issue. Bring on, on ADOS on all your chapters. Bring this and bring your protests to Disney. If they see you at Disney like this and they see you protesting the about re getting reparations. From Disney, not from the government, but from Disney, who's got loads of money, they're making a lot of profit. You'll see how the attitude quickly whips around. But the thing is, you're going to be shut down. Because I don't understand that the one of the part of the owners of YouTube, and this is why YouTube has done what it's done, is Universal Studios. Universal Studios owns a chunk of YouTube. This is why they shut down a lot of the stuff. This is why you get these copyright strikes or guideline strikes. What, what guidelines have you have you broken? They won't, we don't tell you. Well, the guideline that you broke is you went against Universal Studios. Again, this is this is an ADOS issue. This is global slavery. 
they're controlling everything, including the narrative. The stuff that goes against their narrative, like Yvette Carnell, gets shut down. That's why your likes don't matter. It doesn't matter how many subscribers you have. You, Lionel LeBron, Lionel Nation, did this for two years. He trying to repair his channel because he was a Democrat who ended up supporting Trump. They started, they started attacking his channel. They demonetized him for no particular reason. And it doesn't matter how many people came in in, in the room and, and put, checked the like button or how many people subscribed, he still got shut down. He still got, well, shadow banned, where the numbers, oh, you see they're going up. and all the, Hey, what happened to all my subscribers? What happened to all my likes? What happened to all my views? Simple. They were deleted. This is ADOS run by the major major uh, media studios. And again, it's there to protect the, the, uh, uh, the elite. Anyways, uh, that's it for now. And I will see you uh, tomorrow night, hopefully, uh, for the next installment. We are Cyborg Alpha, Infinite Queen in Middle School for Life.